Hey ghosts, how's it going? Bounty here from Bounty Gaming and today we're going to be discussing my top 5 likes and my top 5 dislikes on day 3 Ghost Recon Worldlands. Just to let you guys know whether you're sitting there going, should I buy this game? The reviews are a bit mixed, some people love it, some people hate it. What kind of bugs are out there? We're going to go over the top 5 likes and dislikes to help you guys with the purchase decision. Alrighty, what we're going to be doing for this video here, the gameplay you're going to be seeing is the second mission, Rebellion Rising, and for this mission what we need to do is stop the convoy. The best way to stop the convoy is to rock up in a car, shoot out the window, shoot out all the tires in the cars, and then go up, convoy stop, easy as that. Next, we need to find more intel, which will disclose where the re rebel radio is actually hiding. When we find out where that radio is, we're going to rock up and defend it from the bad guys so that our message can be broadcasted to everyone out there in the wildlands. Alrighty guys, so to kick it off, my top 5 likes, the first one, Ghost Recon Wildlands, it is fun. In fact, it is very fun, you'll have a lot of laughs. The only challenge here is to find a good team. So when you start up, at the moment in this gameplay I am playing with bots. But you need to go online, you need to play with friends or other people, and honestly, you'll have a ball. This game, when it was in beta, I downloaded it on the final day of the beta, logged in, found a really awesome group of people, and we went through, finished the whole first area, second area, easy as, and it was a lot of fun because we were a well-oiled team. We had a few snipers who would camp up on the hill, we had a guy who was up close combat, and then we had someone else who was like the drone expert. And all of his skills in the skill tree were just drone focused. So he had really long battery life. He could go undetected. And what he would actually do is find all the enemies. The sniper would pick off the ones on the perimeter or people hiding up in the towers. And then I would go in as the main guy with my TAR-21 silence and just kill everyone. So it's a lot of fun guys, if you get a good team you're gonna love this game, every single moment of it. You'll probably even go to bed dreaming about it. Alrighty Ghosts, it also is open land as you're aware, so that is the second thing I like most about this game. The reason for that is it's open, you can do whatever you want, if you want to drive a helicopter for miles you can, if you prefer boats, walking dirt bikes, all that type of stuff, you can pretty much choose any method of transport. As long as you show up at the objective, everything's fine. If you don't actually want to play the campaign, and I have done this a few times, if you don't feel like doing missions at the moment, you can rock over to little sections on your map that have the heat markers indicating that there's Unidad or some rebels hanging around over there, and you can actually go up and just kill them have some fun, try it stealth, go in loud, whatever you like. If you like messing around with civilians or if you want to practice putting C4s on cars and watching them blow up, that's all okay as well. So the open map has really given this game another dimension and it also gives ghosts out there the freedom to do whatever they like. Alrighty, so for my third point guys, updates. So the thing I like about this game guys, there is a clear plan in place to bring updates to the game. PvP is going to be coming out soon, there is a trailer that has just come out, oh sorry to that civilian. So PvP is going to be really awesome, there's going to be DLC missions, might even be DLC expansions to the map, different areas, different stories. There's a lot of updates coming, there'll be new weapons no doubt, there'll be lots more things to do. So the game at the moment. It's going to stay how it is, just to give ghosts a bit of time so they can go through, progress in the game, get some missions done, unlock some weapons, and then the updates. I'm sure they'll have at least a year on their roadmap of planned updates for this game. We will discuss this a little bit more, because it is also one of my dislikes, but we'll get there shortly. Alrighty, small learning curve is my fifth of my top five likes for this game. You can pretty much install Ghost Recon Wildlands, you can sit down, grab a few guns, and play. It's not like Dota 2 where you've got to invest 1000 hours before you can even make it above 3k MMR. It's not challenging like other games out there, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, where there are a lot better players in your matches and you're struggling to keep up, you're struggling to get first, all of that stuff. 
Ghost Recon, you can pretty much load up the game, grab a few guns, and then mow down the AI. You can jump in with the team if you're a bit uncomfortable. And the first time I actually started playing, I could not find a team in the first area. And I only just picked up the game. So obviously I want to go first area, second area, third, and progress naturally like that. But the first match I found, they were in the third area. The challenge was set quite high. Everyone had sniper rifles, parachutes, all that type of jazz. I had no parachute. I had no sniper rifle. And I just had the standard silenced submachine gun, silenced pistol. And that was really about it. So to be honest, I was actually quite useless because my drone was terrible. I had no parachute, had no sniper rifle. But even still, we went through the third area and we actually finished four out of the six missions back to back. The fifth one did give us a bit of, bit of a challenge purely because it was myself, I was the anchor of the team, but that's not to say that they carried me through the missions that we did complete. I could actually hold down certain areas on my own. If they were on the cliff sniping, I could run in and happily take out a few people. So the actual challenge, the learning curve is quite small. Just make sure when you pick up the game, when you jump in, that you do take a look at your controls. So you know how to select missions, you know how to bring up the map, you know what skills are out there, and you can sort of start plotting, you know, how am I going to build my ghost? Do I want to be a sniper? Am I going to be up close and personal? Check out the attachments for your weapons. That is often a place that is underlooked because people don't realize it's there. You can actually customize your weapons. Alrighty guys, away from the positive things, we are going to hit the negatives, and we are going to hit them right now. So the first thing when I was going through the menus in Ghost Recon Wildlands, I loaded it up, and there was a store. So I thought, okay, let's take a look. Let's see what currency is around. And I logged in, and it's all... Pay with your own money to unlock this gun, pay with your own money to unlock this vehicle, to get this patch on your bag, to get this different outfit, to get this mask, to get this bandana. And to be honest, coming from Titanfall 2, where this stuff doesn't really happen, where updates are free and things like that, it was quite shocking. And not only were they in the store, they were very highly priced. So you weren't going around looking for like a $1.99 bandana or a, a dollar or 99 cents for a t-shirt. You're talking serious money. And so that's definitely an area in the game that I'm purely going to keep away from. But it's also a shame because I know that's the area that Ubisoft are going to update the most. That's where the new weapons are going to go. That's where the new outfits are going to go. The further character customization. I have a funny feeling it's all going to go in there. And you'll be swiping your card over and over. For the second thing that we don't like about Ghost Recon Wildlands is the insane loading times if you don't have a solid state drive. So for this game, if you have it on a mechanical hard drive, it took me eight minutes to get into a co-op match. Eight minutes. That is ridiculous. That is unheard of. The loading just to launch the game was insane. Then we launched the game. We got into the menu. Then we found a co-op match, it loaded about two or three times. Then when I joined the match, I was on the other side of the map, and everyone else was having fun doing the mission, so I thought, okay, I need a fast travel, I need to land on where these guys are and join in, because, you know, that's what you do when you play co-op, you want to help your team. And just that fast travel alone took a minute and a half, and it was, it was crazy, it was crazy. I was ready to just go, okay, I'm done, uninstall this, snap the keyboard in half, throw the monitor out the window. It's just ridiculous. But to get around this, guys, if you do have a solid state drive, place it on there straight away. I know the game is 40 gig. I know the update today was another 4 gig, so you might be a bit tight for space, but I would not play it without it. I noticed it even solved a lot of my rendering issues, and then I thought, ah, Maybe my hard drive is actually faulty or under load or something like that, but it's 100% fine. I did a full surface scan, checked the smart, 100% fine. So I think the game just struggles at times with the slow read times from the hard drive. I do highly recommend solid state drive. Alrighty, so the next one guys, 
you've probably all been waiting for this it's the bugs from the beta a lot of bugs were identified there's rendering issues there will be places where your game just quite simply won't work you will be frozen you'll be sitting there going okay I'm frozen and then two minutes later it goes again and then it freezes and then it renders then it goes again and before you say hey it's probably your computer it could be your processor we are running pretty high up things high up specs so there has been an update that actually came out today which is supposed to address most of those issues but we won't know until we jump in and try it out whether they've actually been resolved they may or may not have been resolved there are other bugs out there that were clearly highlighted they made a beta we had tons and tons of ghosts jump in they tried out the game and there was a very clear list of going okay these are all the issues driving is bad things don't render we get a lot of crazy stutter you know there's just general problems in the game sometimes when you're on the cliff if you're on the cliff edge you actually fall down and you're stuck forever you cannot get out of there unless you quick travel so there's even broken parts in the map where ghosts can get stuck and you just completely glitch out you'll fly off the map your screen will be stuttering which can make people sick and all that type of stuff so it would have been nice if they just said hey this is a list of known issues we're gonna go through we're gonna fix these up as best as we can the ones that we cannot fix up we're gonna show you guys what it might look like we're gonna let everyone know hey we have been told there are three you know three issues here we've only fixed two this one is still outstanding so when people purchase the game they're aware oh hey all of these are fixed this issue is outstanding should I still buy it okay I'll buy it okay I won't buy it I'll wait till they fix it all that type of stuff there needs to be a bit more communication from Ubisoft and letting people know before they drop $70 on the standard version $100 on the normal version or a hundred uh, not normal version deluxe or 150 on the gold edition I mean this is an expensive game Titanfall 2 Battlefield 1 they sent me back $60 this game over half uh, sorry over double what <laughs> over double so it's just a shame that they didn't put a bit more extra care into their communication so people purchasing it we're knowing what they're going to get into for myself personally guys I was going to purchase it anyway so this is not a after purchase getting salty type argument alrighty so for the last one guys the last thing that I don't like about Ghost Recon Wildlands is the variety of missions and also what you can see here tagging supplies so we're gonna go we're gonna do this as a little double so tagging supplies everyone has to do it it is honestly like a bus stop at peak time everyone's in a queue you can only get one person through the door one person paying at any one time and this is just causing sort of frustrations I would say it's not really an issue it's not really broken but it is causing frustrations so hopefully they can have an area of effect where people within a hundred meters can automatically gather the supplies if someone else from their squad goes up and collects them that's just a little thing that I thought hey this is frustrating hopefully it's gonna get fixed soon also guys for the variety of missions you will notice when playing this game that things they do change but not really so there'll be a lot of stop the convoy gather more intel gather more information interrogate someone kill someone at, or extract someone so you're either going to be killing a leader interrogating a leader or extracting someone who they've held hostage and nine times out of ten you're going to be going in killing everyone and then the missions pretty much over so you'll head up to a headquarters maybe a uni dad headquarters kill all the bad guys you'll run in steal a truck run in kill their guard run in capture the hostage it's pretty much a rinse and repeat for that so it would be really exciting to see additional missions or differences in the missions where maybe you go around to towns you recruit a few people they come with you you will jump in helis you do like a massive attack drop some bombs down something a bit a bit different you know a bit more variety anyway ghosts I hope you guys are enjoying the game if you have the game and if you don't stick around because we're going to be covering all of the missions here on the bounty gaming channel we're just going to be finishing up this one at the moment defending the radio for a couple more seconds 
and we're going to be covering all of the missions, tips and tricks, loadouts, guns, unlocks, DLC, all of that good stuff. So hopefully I'll see you guys around sometime soon. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you ghosts later out in the wildlands. Glad we could help.